Trevor. What is it? What's with you? You're alive. You're alive. Well, of course I'm alive. I believe you're here. Where else would I be? And you're in one piece. And that pleases you? You know, I thought I'd be the last person you wanted to see. Shut up and let me look at you. You been drinking? Your plane was missing. It crashed. What? 149er. You're supposed to be a 149er. It, it went down? Oh, no. Here. No, tell me this isn't happening. I, I gave my seat to Brooke. Dear God. Brooke and, and Edmund. What happened? Are they okay? Just tell me they're we okay. We don't know. We don't know. And you thought... Oh, those dear, dear people. Honey, honey, I'm fine. I just heard. I don't want you to panic. Everything's gonna be okay. I'm gonna stay right here with you till we find out. Yeah, that, that's, that's what Scott keeps saying. Yeah, he's right. Everything's gonna be fine. No, nothing bad's gonna happen. But, but Trevor said that you were supposed to be on that flight. Well, I was supposed to be. But Brooke was so worried about you, she wanted to get home earlier, so... So we traded places. I'm sorry. I thought... that I was helping. I was really trying to do the right thing. She switched flights because of me? She switched flights... because she's a mother and she loves you. It's all my fault. It's all my fault. It's stupid. Lane's fuselage is scattered in a small but contained area. Although the passenger list has not been officially released, our sources tell us the commuter flight from New York was carrying some well-known local citizens. Among them, Edmund Gray and his family. Hey, 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 hey. What's going on down here? Uncle Mike, a plane went down. Edmund Gray was on board. I thought I said no TV. What's the matter with you two? We can go back to sleep. Look, there's enough bad news out there as it is. Come on. But Uncle Mike, we know these people. That plane was on its way back from New York. New York? Janet's in New York. She said she'd be home last night. Look, don't worry about Janet, okay? Uncle Mike, was Janet in the plane crash, too? What about Jamie? Think about it. He, he's Amanda's age. She loses Brooke. Oh, God, what have I done? You didn't do nothing. You didn't do nothing to nobody. You tried to help somebody. Laura must hate me. No. Nobody hates you. Nobody. I won't lose my mom again, Scott. I won't. Well, let's just wait till we find out some more, okay? It won't be long. What are what they saying? They found him. But um, the rescue crews are going to radio back in once they ID the passengers. Well, are they okay? I don't know. Look, I, I, as soon as I get news, i got to call my mom because she, she can't hear about this. Of course. May I have your attention? Uh, Captain Romano of the New Jersey State Police has just contacted us. They've assessed the situation, the area has been secured, and a number of survivors have been found. Uh, they are passenger Jim Thomason, uh, passenger Brooke English, uh, passenger Edmund Gray, and an infant child. Their exact conditions aren't known at this moment. Anybody else? Hey, how, how about my sister? I'm sorry, Mr. Santos. That's all I have. She was sitting right next to him. She wouldn't leave her baby. I mean, are you, what, do you radio back? Maybe, yes, maybe... Uh, if I hear anything more, I'll let you know. They're, they're looking for her, though, right? I mean, they're not going to stop. I mean, they're, they're going to keep looking for her, right? I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Santos, but 
According to the state police, it appears the others did not survive. Oh my God. Oh, say that. I'm sorry. Coffee? <gasps> Oops. Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Huh? You've been drinking coffee. If the shakes, you're going to be wired for life. Yeah, well, there's worse things, I guess. You're going to want to sleep sometime. You take mine. No. I'm okay. Well, you don't look okay. At least I'm alive. Thanks to the big guy upstairs. Speaking of the big guy to see how this all fits into his plan. I mean, here I am sipping tea and Marie is gone. Would this make sense? Yeah, it will to Amanda. What about baby Sam? He could be waking up right now. He'll call out his mother's name. She won't be there. He'll never see her again. Why Maria? Why not me? Guess it wasn't your time. You really believe that? Yeah, I try to. For the kid's sake. No, I've said too many goodbyes to believe they're really for permanent. <laughs> I don't want you to make... I don't want you to feel worse. <sighs> I'm sorry. I need to see Amanda. When can I see her? Sure, now. Good. I'll grab the bag. Let's go. Okay. What's the look? I know where the bag is. Come on. I just left it right around here. Last night when Mommy said she'd be home, and last night's when the plane went down. I'm sure John's okay, Amanda. No, you're not. You're just saying that. People were killed. They said so on TV. Do you have any idea what airline she might be on? I don't know. I'll tell you what, why don't we call the airport and get a passenger list? Now, that, uh, that, that's probably a waste of time. I mean, you probably won't even be able to get through. Oh, you take me to the airport, Uncle Mike. Look, your daddy would tell you if anything happened to Janet, okay? Amanda, where are you going? Wake up, Daddy. Daddy's at work. Already? He's swamped. Look, how about I make you some waffles? He never leaves without kissing me goodbye. And besides, you never stay unless... He's away. Something's wrong. I know something's wrong. Uh, uh, Amanda, if you're going to go call your dad, he's... Holy mommy. Oh, no, no, Amanda, don't do that, okay? Don't do that. Put the phone down. Janet yeah, might not even be up yet. She said I could call her any time. Y yeah, but she might have gotten in late. She's probably tired. She, she might not even hear the phone ring. It's right by her bed. May I have Janet Green's room, please? Uh, you, you know what? She's probably at breakfast. No one's answering. Well, she might be in the shower. My mommy's dead, isn't she? Oh, Amanda, no. My mommy's dead and you don't want to tell me. Amanda, that's not true. I want my mommy. I want my mommy now. I, I know you do. I know now. you, sweetie. I know I you do. I want my mommy okay. now. Okay. I want my mommy. Amanda, I'm right here. Oh, mommy. Yeah. Sweetheart, what's wrong? What's wrong, honey? What's happening? She came downstairs to watch cartoons, and she caught a clip of the crash on TV. Oh. I thought it was Jobs playing the went down. Well, it could have been. Oh, I'm okay. Mommy's okay. I mean, everything's gonna be fine. Look at me. I'm perfectly all right. It's gonna be all right, honey. I'm sorry to see you so upset. Is there anything I can do to make you feel better? could make you some pancakes. Would you like some pancakes? Don't we go. Mm. 
You want to talk about anything, sweetheart? Mm -mm. Okay, we don't have to talk about it right now. You're very brave, Amanda, you know that? No, I'm not. I was scared. Everybody gets scared sometimes. Even grown-ups? Grown-ups most of all. Are you afraid of anything? Sure. And I'll let you in on a secret. Your dad gets scared too sometimes. What are you and Daddy afraid of? Well, mostly that you would ever be unhappy. I'm not unhappy around you and Daddy. When you have a child, you want everything to be perfect. And you've been given this special little person to take care of it and look out for and no matter how hard you try nobody's perfect you're perfect no I'm not well I think you're perfect it's because you love me despite my imperfections that's different don't ever go away promise I'll always love you Amanda don't ever leave me promise me I promise that I'll always love you and that I'll always look out for you. Even after you're big and grown up. I'll be there. Watching over you. I'm going to do my best to live a long, long time. Until you're old and gray. And even after I've gone. I go up to heaven. I'll still be watching out for you. When you're a gray-haired grandma rocking your grandbabies to sleep, <laughs> I'll be there, looking over your shoulder, whispering I love you in your ear. You'll never leave me, right? Right. I never will. People come and go, but my love for you will last forever. You sure? I'm sure. Hello. Uncle uh, Mike has got to take off. I thought you might want to say goodbye. Mm, bye, Uncle Mike. Say hi to Uncle Brad for me. I will, okay? It's good to see you healthy and safe. Thanks. I'll walk out with you. No, Mommy, don't go. No one ever go. Please, Daddy, make her stay. Seth. Janet's got to get some rest there, sweetheart. Mm, she can rest here. I've got to go back to my hotel and take a shower and shake. You can take a bubble bath here. I have tea rose, daisy, lilac, wildflower. Honey, and... I'll be back soon, okay? Mm, you didn't make me breakfast yet. Can I have pancakes? You asked if I wanted them. I do now. Can you make them the way you make them with bananas and coconut syrup? Please, Mommy. I'll make you a deal, sweetheart. You go upstairs, you get dressed, wash up, brush your teeth, and we'll have a pancake feast. The way Mommy makes them? That's the ticket. Ah, uh, thanks, you, Daddy. Sure, sweetheart. That's good. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I won't. Thanks, Trevor. Look you, you're the one that's going to be making the flapjacks. For letting me come over. For letting me stay. Well, I should be thanking you. You hit the spot with the mandible. She was so scared. Well, she's not the only one. What? Bananas are on top of the fridge. Pancake mix is in the cupboard. Does anything ever change around here? Well, I guess I better go get breakfast started. Amen. Janet. Yeah. I'm glad you're okay. I know. Thank you.
Adam keeps yammering about a refund on Erica's bail. Well, he should see the county clerk. Hey, how did her transfer to uh, county lockup go? About as well as you might expect. Class act all the way, huh? How are you holding up? We about done? Yeah, one final. Uh, got a very interesting call from Trans Global Airways, wondering if Montgomery and Associates could be a shield in case any other crash survivors suit. I'm hoping you told them to take a flight. We... Well, they kind of took care of it themselves. I told them a friend of mine had died in a crash, that my kid's mother might have died in a the crash. They decided to seek representation elsewhere. Good. I heard about about Janet trading broker ticket. Yeah. It shows you how random everything is in this world. Just when you think you've got everything under control, <laughs> Suddenly, you find yourself sitting on your butt wondering what the hell hit you. Oh man, his life would have been messed up nine ways a Sunday if anything had happened to Janice. What about her, old man? Good evening, Miss Green. Got a special tonight pineapple daiquiris. Right. One sip and I'd be surfing Channel Z. I think I'll have a double espresso. No, no, that's no fun. All work and no play these days. So you mind if I turn up the volume? I'll be my guest. The death sentence handed down May 19th and now pending an appeal. The cause of the crash of Trans Global Flight Number 149, originating in New York, is still under investigation. The commuter flight lost altitude and crash landed on a cliffside in New Jersey. Shut it off, would you? Included pilot Please? Bill Finney and local neurologist Maria Santos Gray, who survived. He doesn't know what happened. I do. I was on that flight. I'm sorry. For what? Being alive? A human tragedy being reduced to sound bites, and next I'll cut to the antacid commercial. That newscast hit close to home. Too close. I was almost on this flight. I gave my ticket to a friend who was in a hurry to get home. Did your friend make it? Yeah. Brooke. She was one of the lucky ones. Oh, Brooke English, yeah. You know, there's a little girl who's alive because of what she did. I mean, Brooke was beyond heroic. So ironic. She lost her own daughter in a tragic accident. And then saved somebody else's. You try to ask yourself why you just go crazy, though. Listen, I, I don't mean to be too pushy, but I'm a stranger in town. Do you care to keep me company? I really should be looking at these spreadsheets, but life's short. I'd be happy to join you. Great. Yeah, my insides took a ride when that plane went down. I, the airline wasn't spilling anything. I thought Janet had gone up in flames. She walks through the door. Oh, Janet's a remarkable woman. Plattsville prison to Pine Valley, that's quite a trip. And you, you can't get her out of your mind. I think about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. You've become a poet, I see, too. Oh, thank you very much. Trevor, this is it's, uh, it's okay to admit you like Janet, you know. I mean, she's a good person. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I feel like I'm betraying that every time I let her in the door. She kept that in a well. And you kept Janet where? A meat locker? A meat cellar? What was it? What? So? What's the point? It's supposed to make us even? No, Trevor. The point is that we all are capable of doing things that we just wouldn't even consider doing under normal circumstances. But that doesn't mean that we're not worthy to be loved. Nobody's talking about love here. So what are we talking about? Companionship. You've got Harold for that. <laughs> no, man, don't waste Janet. Me, you know, yeah. being a widow where I am, a guy has needs. 
listen to me. What am I talking about? I don't know. I can't believe it. All the women in Pine Valley are glom on to Janet like a the planet here, like a dog in heat. I gotta be desperate. Trevor, Trevor, this is not about sexual frustration. This is not about desperation. What should I do? I'm glad you asked me that question. I'll tell you what I do. I try to figure out why I was so afraid of getting involved with Janet Green. And then the second I figured it out, I try to get rid of those fears. Fears of Janet Green? No way! All right, big guy, prove it. Where's Janet tonight? I don't know, home. That'd be my guess. Why don't you get thee to the Valley Inn? I read in the paper that an unidentified man pulled Edmund Gray from the wreckage. Would that be you? Depends. Is this on or off the record? I'm not a reporter, if that's what you're thinking. Oh, good. In that case, I am your mystery man. Why the low profile? <laughs> We're a world hungry for heroes. No, no, a hero is somebody who goes above and beyond the call of duty. What I did, anybody would have done under the circumstances. Well, you called Brooke a hero. You said what she did was beyond heroic. You saved a life. Don't the same rules apply? Well, I couldn't save Edmund's wife. So don't make me out to be something I'm not. Hi. Stephen. Uh, I'll have a, a vodka martini straight up. Uh, make it a double. Someone you know? Poor Brooke. Drinking martinis alone at the bar. She must be feeling pretty bad. I haven't seen her since before the crash. Do you mind if I go over and say hello? You don't have to ask my permission. So the doctor comes out of the office and he says to the wife, I don't like the look of him. And she goes, I don't like the look of him either, but he's good to the children. <laughs> hey, Brooke. Hi. Hi, gee. This is so nice. So nice to see you. This is this is great. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm super. I'm just super. How are you? I'm okay. I'm really sorry about what happened. Hmm? Oh, come on. You have nothing to be sorry about. Well, you wouldn't have been on that plane if I hadn't given you my ticket. Well, did you know that the plane was going to crash? No. Of course not. No. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like you, you took a, a crowbar to the controls, right? I, I know that it, it must have been a terrible experience for you. Listen, it's okay. I'm, I'm alive. I'm fine. I, I, you know, ended up with a couple of scratches. It's okay. I got to tell you something funny. Um, I took the clothes I was wearing on the plane to the cleaners, and the guy points to this stain. It was oil or something, and he goes, um, I can't guarantee I'm going to get that stain out. And then, like I wanted to tell him, you know, life is messy, so what are you going to do? Just clean it up the best you can, right? Hey, listen, I want, can I buy you a drink? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get us both a drink, okay? Bartender, hit me again. Always wanted to say that. Well, Trevor, hi there. You're just hey. in time. How are you? <laughs> Looks like happy hour started without me, huh? Yes, indeed. Well, you can certainly catch up. What's your pleasure? Huh? A little mm -hmm. small talk? Come on. Come on. Tell me something that you've never told a living soul. Hmm? Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Why don't you just um, pretend that I'm a passenger on a plane that you'll never see again? Excuse me, sorry. Who's that? Um, it's Jim Thomason. I, I he just met him. I, he, he was on the plane with Brooke. He's a nice guy. He's a hell of a nice guy. He saved Edmund's life, and there, for the grace of Jim, go I. Hmm. Look, I'm uh, 
starving. We want to tie on the feed bag, some ribs, some coleslaw. What do you say? I think I'll just uh, do what he is. Excuse me, man. Right yeah. Don't get too full. Hello there. Hello there. Ask me how I'm doing. How are you doing? No comment. May I buy you another drink? Uh, no, better yet. Why don't you buy me a drink? It's my birthday. It is, really? No. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, it's my unbirthday, you know, like in, in Alice in Wonderland. Oh. I've actually, I've decided that I, from now on, am going to have my birthday cake and eat it, too. Well, happy unbirthday. Brooke's bagged. Yeah, well, she's entitled. Did I say she wasn't? So, what are you doing here? Well, actually, I, uh... I came by to grab a beer before I came up to see you. What for? Or should I hold my breath? Listen. Come on over here. Would you Would you bring your drinks and join us? Because a party is not a party unless you have your very, very dear friend. Well, well in a minute. Uh, we were just talking about Amanda. Amanda. Your daughter. You know, she's God's blessing. And I don't want you guys to wait until it's too late, okay? Because life is too short, and it can turn on a dime on a blink of an eye. And love is the only thing that lasts. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm bushed. I gotta get up at the crack of dawn. I'm just gonna hit the hay. Night. pretty late and all good good things must come to an end M's the rule I, uh, thought you might miss this. Oh, yeah, I, I do. I mean, I would. I can't work without it. It was what I thought. Yeah, if somebody could have walked off with it, a lot of nice people here at the Valley Inn, but you still got to be careful. Look how you're answering the door there, huh? Oh, right. Well, look up. Thanks for bringing it up. Good night, then, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's late, all right. Wait. Something else you wanted to say? Only... You mind if I come in? Would you like a soda from the mini bar or anything? What, and have you drop a five spot on nothing? <laughs> no thanks. Well, I brought a couple cans home from holidays, which I paid for. Oh, that's, that's okay. I, I should have known an accountant's not going to waste their money. Can I offer you a seat? No, I'll stand. Okay. 
Okay. What's on your mind? You know what Brooke was saying downstairs in the bar about seize the day? Yes. Uh, well, how'd that strike you? It kind of surprised me. I never took Brooke for a go get him kind of gal, but I figured it had something to do with the plane crash. That made her think how precious life is. Yeah, it sure is. And it... I really wish I hadn't given her my ticket. Well, it's survivor guilt. You're suffering from survival guilt. You both are. I mean, I, I've been there, you know, you see some action and you're okay by the grace of God and you look down and there's a guy riddled with bullets and you don't even have a hair out of place. It's survival guilt, that's, that's, uh... We talk a lot about it a lot in the VA. Just goes to show you that life's too short to waste. Yeah, too short and too unpredictable. You didn't come here to talk about survival guilt, did you? You think I could get that soda? No. I came here to talk about you and me. <laughs> 